and um, what uh, was mentioned about there being a lot of online converters to convert things to a variety of different formats. And usually what they do is they give you a free service that works but might not be as convenient as you'd like to and then they, they have a premium service so if you really want you know if you really want it to work faster or whatever or download a copy so it runs quicker then you can do that but you sort of have to be um, sort of have to have some tools in your toolbox to do these conversions uh, to, to do a, a flexible and good job with this so again there's our audio you can do audio tags as well as well as video um, what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about, um, or, or at least run through and, and, and view some of the JavaScript stuff that you can do with, um, with the HTML5 video. Now, we, really when we talk about standard web technologies, we're talking about three technologies or three languages. And this is, this is again, why why folks are getting away from the plug-in mentality and the flash mentality because it's nice if these things can be, all be done with standards. All right? And the three standards are HTML, which are those tags that we talked about, and we saw the example of the video tag and the audio tag. There is then CSS, which we haven't talked about, and we might, or I can help you individually if you have questions about it. And that deals with the appearance of the page. HTML relates to the content of the page. CSS relates to the appearance of the page. So for example, the content of the page, in this case, might be the words using the object element. The fact that it's displayed as black text on a white background, in this particular font, in this particular size, that's not really the content. That's the presentation. That's the appearance of it. So we separate that content from appearance for a lot of really good reasons. That makes it easier for us to change one without having to affect the other. So what we can do is we can change the CSS and not touch the HTML. Then all of a sudden, instead of black text on a white background in this font and this size, it's yellow text on a blue background with a different font and a bigger size, or whatever we would want. All so right. when you adjust your skins in your browser, you're playing with the way the cascading style sheet Probably, is interpreted? Yeah. yeah. What, what you're doing, uh, now, now skins can mean a lot of different things at a lot of different times, but if you're changing the appearance of the page, for example, I know like you can customize your angel page for example. And you can customize on a lot of sites. You can say you want it to look this way or that way. What you're doing is you're changing the CSS. You're saying, hey, I don't want to use this CSS. I want to use that CSS. So yeah. And, and the fact that it's separated allows us to do that much easier. If everything was all tangled into one, you know, is what they used to call in the old days like spaghetti code, right? Because with spaghetti code, you know, you pull something here, and something over here changes, right? Because everything is linked in and interconnected. But by having a clean separation between those two, we can go and change the CSS without affecting the HTML. There's a third piece to the puzzle, and that is JavaScript. And JavaScript relates to behavior. What I, might, what I mean by behavior is something like this. Let's go to I don't particularly like this site, but I know that it does what I want to demonstrate. So we'll use it. Behavior is something like this. Notice when I put my mouse over the word news, notice that the line underneath it changes to be all the subcategories of news. If I put over entertainment, that changes as well. 
if I put it over sports, money, and so on. So as I go and do that, these things change. That's what I mean by behavior. By behavior, another way to put behavior is interactivity. In other words, I do something, me as a user does something, the page responds somehow. Now, in this case, this is uh, another example of behavior. That is, that these uh, lead news stories, excuse me, or whatever you want to call them, change periodically. So that's another example of behavior. So anything that goes beyond the page just sort of sitting there looking at you is what I mean by behavior. So it either can be like interactive behavior where I do something and it responds to me, or it can even be something automatic like this, where it goes and does this. Now the key to JavaScript is that it doesn't require going back to the server and reloading the entire page. All right. The advantage of that is it's going to happen quicker because even on a very quick um, connection, uh, internet connection, if I make a request to the server, it has to go through my internet service provider and bounce around the web for a while and make it to the web server in question and then make the return trip. And for any number of factors, that can be slow on a given day. All right? You've heard of things like denial of service attacks, like there was a big one last weekend. You know, if there's a node on the internet that is slower, that something's being routed through, you know, it can slow things down a lot. Um, if my internet service provider is having problems, it can slow things down. If my connection to the internet is bad, we had uh, a case where our internet speed, my internet speed at home was getting slower and slower and slower. We went out, we found out, and the, the guy from the internet company told us that whatever they coat the wires with is really tasty to squirrels. So squirrels will sit and nibble on them. So, okay, they install it today, it works perfect. They install it, you know, the squirrels nibble on it for a while, still going pretty good. Then it rains. Then it, it rains or wet. whatever, yeah, After exactly. After the squirrels nibbled at it, then right. it causes the problem. And then, yeah, and it's not as though it's going to fail, because what happens a lot of times is, like, if you make a request and it can't send it back, it'll try a few times or whatever, but the bottom line is at a certain point, your, your internet goes to a crawl. But all those factors are factors that when you go to the server, when you make a request out to the server, there's a risk that it's going to take a long time to get back to you. So, therefore, this is known as client-side coding, which means that it all runs. When I downloaded this web page, I also downloaded the JavaScript that handles this, and therefore, it can run instantaneously because it's already loaded on this machine. Let's take a quick look at some of the things that you can do using JavaScript and video. I have a question. Yeah. You know how uh, HTML and CSS have like their own notepad coding, basically? Uh-huh. Does JavaScript too? Excuse me. Like, does it have its own notepad of like... Does it have its own file? Yeah. You can. Even with CSS, remember, you can build your CSS and your and HTML. That's what I was about to ask, because you can do CSS and HTML, can you, and you can do JavaScript and CSS, because I remember like changing Right. Have, like, a different color, right. like, underline or not underline. Right. So. Yeah, usually what you do is um, typically the CSS is in its own file. The HTML is in, is in its own file. And then the JavaScript, you may have it as its own file or you may have it as part of the HTML. Uh, do you, would you link the JavaScript to the HTML then? Yeah, you it, do just like you do CSS, yeah. Then there's a couple of ways you can do it, but yeah, essentially you do that. One thing they do is they give the ability to 
sort of develop your own HTML5 video player. If you want your videos to have a certain look, you can go in and this is not going to play in this browser. No. Okay, actually it is playing. are all things that you can do through the commands and they have a list of things that you can do with this let's see point is, is you, you can exert some control over it rather than being, um, how do I want to say it, rather than being um, at the mercy of whoever developed the plugin and their controls and their way of interacting with the video. You can build some of your own custom stuff to, to interact with the video the way that you want to. If you want to go that trouble, I mean maybe you just want to pop the video on your page um, and, and, and go from there. I like to touch base on the image tag. Okay. Um, that's probably the other good multimedia one. Let's see, we talked about audio. Um, we showed an example. We've done video. Uh, I like to do image. I like to talk a little bit about typography because uh, typography is mainly CSS as opposed to HTML. So we'll probably do that one next time. Uh, and then we're going to get into animation and how, how animation works. Um, but to do an image, let's see. Here we have, I'm going to go take this guy. And edit it. Let's say, and I'll get rid of the video tag on this one. Let's say I want a image. Now, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to put all of my stuff in the same folder. So in all these examples, I've been putting everything in the same folder. So if I want to go and put that there, I can go and I can put an image tag for that. Now it's important that I know the exact name of that image. All right. Um, so therefore I'm going to go in actually here and I'm going to turn file extensions on so I can see the file extension. And that's jellyfish.jpg. Now, JPEG files can be JPG or JPEG and so on, so you want to make sure you have that right. So an image tag looks like this. Image SRC, you should notice that from the video example. And then I can go in and say the name of it, which is jellyfish.jpg. Now, the one other thing that we do is we can specify an alt attribute. An alt attribute is what will be read to someone who is visually impaired and who is accessing this page through um, a screen reader. It will also appear if, um, for whatever reason, the, the link to that page becomes broken. Um, The slash greater than at the end is sort of a shortcut. This is called an empty tag. That, that means that's a beginning and end tag all wrapped into one. So now I go and look at this and there we have the picture of the jellyfish. Now, maybe I don't want that big of a picture of a jellyfish. All right? You have a couple of choices. Um, most of the time what you probably want to do is go and edit that image. All right. You can, both through HTML and through CSS, specify a width and a height of the image. However, keep in mind that if you do that, 
the user is still downloading the full size image. So if I were to make this to display in half, that's not going to speed up the download. It will take up less real estate on the screen, but the user still has to download the full contents of the image. So typically, because of that reason, when I'm faced with this, I can go in, I typically go in and uh, edit the image and make it the size that I want. One thing that's often done with mobile devices, and we'll probably talk about CSS a bit next time to, to hit this, is that with mobile devices, you can actually go in and express the size of an image as a percentage. Because again, a big old giant screen is a different number of pixels than a little tiny phone. So if we made it the same size in pixels, it would be gigantic on the phone or it would be tiny on the big screen. Instead, we can, we can uh, sp uh, specify a percentage, and we can put that on there, and um, we then have the ability to, uh, you know, on a, on a smaller screen, it'll take up less space. And that's something that, that's done pretty common, uh, especially when you get, when you work on developing stuff that uh, works on uh, mobile as well as desktop. So a big reason for this video tag, again, is standardization. Standardization between different browsers, even though there are issues concerning that, and also standardization um, as far as plugins go, because Flash does not necessarily have the best support uh, across mobile platforms. It uh, has some support on Android. It has none at all on the Apple. All right. I will make sure I upload the example and the video files that you can play with. Uh, if you want, and as well as uploading the lecture. All right.